This is Slam in Masters of Arena 6, uh, playing as Khmer, obviously, Arena Map. Um, the thing that made this stand out for me is how quickly he was able to hit Castle Age, go on to three TCs, and get all of his economy upgrades, um, able to continuously produce villagers without resorting to the market, and this is how he does it. So, drops two houses straight away as normal, going on to sheep, using his three remaining sheep to scout his map and start pushing in deer. So for this build, Slam's going to utilize the Khmer bonuses um, of the faster farm production, instant drop off, and also, oh, sorry, faster food production from farms with the instant drop off, um, but also the a lack of required buildings to advance ages. So Khmer can do a very, very fast castle time anyway, but the fact that this one is able to go straight on to uh, building two extra TCs is what made it really impressive to me. So he's gone to six on food as normal, but rather than taking from sheep, he's gonna go on to deer. So his scout is pushing in the deer to begin with. <clears throat> now heading across onto wood going for it'll be three villages on wood before going back onto food and so the sheep have been able to find his extras and he can continue pushing in deer just got to make sure that this one's in before the next one runs out he has got a spare sheep there just in case but the plan is to stay on deer deer and other huntables have faster food collection so the priority for slam is getting that fast food collection under his tc so he's shooting it we have moon dancing scout uh, so he's shooting it with two each time because that kills the deer instantly while the rest gather from the old one before coming across and again pushing in the next one uh, going out just to drop a house to make sure it doesn't get housed so again this being a super efficient build order is getting housed would be slightly disastrous um yeah with d you can obviously shift q things and keep that idle tc time down to a minimum going out to berries now he's got all of his deer under the tc scout's going to go collect the remaining sheep I meant to there we go and new villager go out to berries as well this one's going to go out to the boar so currently three on wood, everything else going on food for the time being. Bringing in his remaining sheep and just scouting the back of his maps a little bit. Here, he is shooting the boar with four villagers in the TC. So it takes three shots before ejecting to kill the boar, but it means that he's able to keep collecting the whole time. And he'll do the same again with a second boar. He'll have villagers collecting from, I think it's the boar. Yeah, it will be. So villagers still collecting from the boar while the others are in the TC shooting it. Uh, so gone on to four on sheep this time. Uh, four on sheep? Four on wood now. Uh, so this is just to be able to help afford farms shortly. He's got the mill, he's got a lumber camp. He's not going to build anything else. He'll build one more house and then no mining camp. And that's again what makes this build stand out for me. It's rare that you would not want that lumber camp that mining camp uh so villager going out for the boar dropping his first farm now it's only really fast castle build orders maybe a drush or a man at arms where you would want to drop many farms in dark age well any farms in dark age uh but with this fast castle with khmer he's dropping he'll end up with four dark age farms i think maybe a fifth one over here um in order to get that food collection up so that he can hit castle age as fast as possible so second ball in he did shoot it again with a tc fifth villager going on to wood again this is all just to bank up the wood he needs later on as i said he's going to drop one more farm in front of his tc we've got 22 pop he goes up here on 25 pop now villagers starting to go out to gold at about seven minutes 40 and they no mining camp this time that fourth farm being dropped and a fifth villager going on to berries 
So we've got five on wood, 16 on food, one on gold. The next villager heading out to wood as well. So that's his sixth on wood. And that'll kind of be it for most of Dark Age into Feudal Age. And now sending a couple of villagers from sheep out to the gold. Clicks up to Feudal Age. Bang on the same time as Modri. So both 25 pop. But the difference here is Modri has invested into two lumber camps and the mining camp as well. So that's 200 extra wood that Slam is going to be able to invest into uh, eco upgrades and TCs as he progresses. Let alone the uh, requisite buildings that Modri will have to build in Feudal Age. So there we go. Just dropping that extra farm now. He's got plenty of wood, so food being more important at this stage. The gold is ticking up from these villagers. And he's still got all the sheep that he can take. Just sending a fifth villager out to uh, gold now. Just over, just over 40 seconds away. Um, didn't keep them on gold. So he shifted one across just to get it out there quicker. But as the villagers came back, they shifted back onto food. So it's all just a case of adapting there for Slam. So now these villagers carrying 10 gold each. The second one arrives three seconds to spare before Feudal Age and instantly clicks up to Castle Age with exactly the gold he needs. And now it's all about getting a bank of food, getting a bank of wood ready for what he needs to spend it on. So double bit axe can come in straight away. Not dropping any farms just yet. They've all still got a little bit of food going. So this was the first one. So 65 food remaining. Uh, so horse collar will come in soon. I think he clicks it any second now. And he will be able to afford his other upgrades when he gets to Castle Edge. So again, he's got some scouting information. But this build is all about economy focus. He is not going to contest relics. So yeah, horse collar just came in. And because he was able to push all of his deer and drop the farms still has one sheep remaining modri same situation so that's fairly standard on arena because you have the deer inside um you're able to keep those sheep a little bit longer keep you going into castle age so we've got seven on wood 17 on food and as i said just banking up the resources that he will want when he hits Castle Edge. So not much for the scout to do at this point. It's just going to stay within the walls. Keep itself safe. And then maybe try to deny the odd relic in Castle Edge. So on the, a few seconds out. Three from under the TC head to one way with one from wood. Three from under the TC with one from wood heads the other to drop those TCs. And Bowsaw coming in straight away. So as soon as Slam hits Castle Age, ex two extra TCs, Bowsaw as the first one. Still has a bank of well over 500 food. He can keep producing from all three of these TCs for a little while. Um, and will be investing in Horse Collar before any more farms are dropped. Uh, so ran out of food on the berries. So those villagers come across the straggler trees. Heavy plow now coming in. Not Horse Collar, I said. A minute ago it meant heavy plow. So the heavy plow a little bit closer to being in and now he can start dropping these farms knowing that they'll complete after heavy plow is finished and TCs can start producing villagers going to wood just one onto gold now just to get that little trickle coming in. So now 20 on wood this I think is a important number for slam. He stays with 20 on wood all the way through Castle Age, focusing on dropping farms as quickly as he can. Just going to house wall on this side just to protect it a little bit. Meanwhile, dropping farms as often as he can at this stage. Already got Bowsaw, already got Heavy Plow. Bowsaw only just coming in for Modri. Modri has also gone up to three TCs, but we will see this come up a lot. Because of the way that modri's gone with this build he's only got three farms doesn't really have too much spare wood he's dropping getting heavy plow now 
So he's relying on the market to get his food income and keep his TCs producing. And even then, having 30 seconds more idle time than Slam. So Slam, 15 on food so far. Just keep dropping the farms. And we'll shortly see Slam even be able to afford Wheelbarrow. More farms, more farms. Keeping 18 to 20 on woods. And starting to add a couple more onto gold now. So with about 20 on each, we're going to have a mining camp. So 18 on wood at this point, 22 on food. Get the mining camp. So this is going to allow Slam to start collecting the gold. Slam even with the time to try and prepare a trap for Modri Scout. Modri doesn't fall for it. <laughs> okay. So again, now the wood is starting to bank up. So now is where Slam's going to start military production. Dropping an archery range. So the idea behind this is it's going to be a fast Imperial Age. Like, it doesn't look like it yet, but Slam is going to be into Imperial Age in about five minutes time uh so he's going to go for a couple of rangers getting wheelbarrow now and a seed workshop go for rams and uh crossbows putting more and more villagers on gold i think these two tcs are both queued onto the gold this one's still queued onto the wood and that 28 on food gives a really reliable food income for Khmer. So Slam, because of how well he set up his economy, as soon as Wheelbarrow completes, he'll go straight onto Handcart. So have both. His scout is out on the map, and I don't think it's going to deny too many monks. Might snipe this one. Just while we've got a little lull. Uh, yes, probably will. So the monk, the relic gets closer, so Modri will collect it. Modri will end up collecting all five relics. Slam not competing for them at all. We do have handcart coming in now. More and more villagers going on to gold. We've got the second archery range now. And here comes the seed workshop. Slam. Reliable, you know, comfortable bank of food that's constantly ticking up. Adding more mining camps. Trying to... He'll add another mining camp over here shortly. Trying to make this gold collection as effective as po efficient as possible. And going on to the secondary gold at the back. There's the mining camp. Nearly at the food he needs. A little bit shy on the gold. So just investing into some more villagers. Continuing the villager production. Plenty of wood banked. Trying to drop a market. And this is the typical thing that like, players at all levels do. They try and drop a market to get that little bit extra resources to go up when they need it. Um, but he's actually going to have the gold by the time before the market completes. So there you go. He's got the resources. He clicks up. And he is on the way to the Imperial Age. So 22, 25 roughly. On the way to the Imperial Age. We'll be there around about the 25 minute mark. Now again, Modri is Byzantines. So... They have their cheaper age advancement. Uh, I wonder if he noticed Slam's score drop. So Slam was ahead on score. It dropped. So I think Modri recognises that and is idling his TCs, cancelling villagers that are queued up so that he can go up as well, buying a bit of food so that he can be up close behind. Modri's gone onto stone, which Slam is now just doing. So he's getting crossbow. He's massed up a few archers in his ranges, massing ma battering rams. Important here is that he goes on to stone. Getting blacksmith now so he can get all the range upgrades for his archers. Slam just over a minute out from the uh, Imperial Age. And shortly we will see Slam start heading across the map. Modri's here with the scout, trying to get that information. Third range now for Slam. And we've got three rams. He's going to build a university as well, ready for more upgrades. 
stone count is ticking up, the villagers just start moving across from stone. Okay, he's short of what he needs, but has some more villagers on stone still collecting as he starts progressing across the map. We've got crossbows and rams. Bodkin coming in, so Imperial Age hits. Still have one ram producing. After that ram, we're going to have capped ram upgrade. And Slam is just going to buy the last bit of stone he needs for a castle. And try and drop it in the center. So the rams are now here. Arbalest coming in. Sees the castle, changes his mind. Okay, this too risky at this point. So he comes back here, much safer, wants to get the castle up, wants trebuchets. Rams are going to come start pressuring the wall. Capped Ram is about to come in just as they break in, or just as they start trying to break in. Here's Capped Ram. Modri is now Imperial Age. Okay, so this is all that Slam can see for the time being. So he's going to break through the wall and go after the TC. Right, Arbalest has completed Bracer, Chemistry, so these are nearly fully upgraded, only missing armor and ballistics. Capped Rams don't really care too much about Castle and TC fire. Arbalest can sit just behind them and protect the Rams from any melee units. So these villagers, as they come and try and batter, the rams will die to the arbalest. TC goes down, and now can start taking out some of the production buildings. Siege workshop at the front. Fairly dangerous position for the arbalest to be in, so that becomes the next priority. And now, castle unlikely to go down at this stage to just four rams, with some of them weak already. So instead, the monastery is going to become a better target. But... All the while, Slam's focus has been on here. Uh, sorry, Modri's focus has been on this push. He doesn't know about the castle. So instead, he is entirely focused on trying to stop this. Producing skirmishers to deal with the Arbalest. Producing cataphracts and sending out villagers to try and deal with the rams. And Manganel to deal with the rams as well. So Slam has been able to start massing trebuchets. Slam knows about this castle and this castle. He sees the elite skirm. Bloodlines coming in. It's now going to be a light cap switch. So, we started this as a build order video and it's kind of progressed into a bit more of strategy side of things. Um, so, kind of should stop here uh, because the build order is what the focus was meant to be. Um, Slam able to get into Imperial Age and now it's he's got the economy to make these switches because of the build um he's only just stopped really oh, you know, he's still producing from the tcs so he's keeping the idle time down he's got a reliable food income that he can start massing light cav to deal with the skirmishers the early aggression kept modri's focus at home he now has trebuchets out so he can push back modri's base all of the pressure stays on modri because of slam's build able to get up super fast with such a strong economy i'd be interested to see how this would fare against a sieve that goes for um some castle age pressure maybe a turks castle drop with uh janissaries and mangonels i think this build would actually struggle against that um theoretically the economy would have been strong enough to have been able to tech switch a lot sooner so it might still be viable but slam makes it work really really well in this one uh the game drags on for another nearly 20 minutes um so it, i'm not going to continue through it because as i said the main focus was on the build order i just got a little bit carried away uh with slams tech switches and uh, everything based on how strong the build was behind it um we're gonna call it there there will be a uh, written description of the build order up till about the imperial age uh on the website so check that out in the description below and if you like this or want to see other builds or if you have any feedback just feel free to drop a comment below as well uh, I, I read all of them because i don't get many um and i will try to include 
what you think is needed in future ones. All right, cheers.